from the land of ketchup and pastry, this is the Soul Podcast. I'm King Sejong, reminding you that if a seat is empty on a crowded subway, proceed with caution. And here are your hosts, Emma Kalka and Joe McPherson. Welcome to the Soul Podcast. This is Joe. And Emma. Yes, you can tell we have Emma. a better microphone now. Yay! I know! And and Pippin, if you can hear him. <laughs> yes, and we have a dog. A new dog. A new dog. He's still adjusting to life at my house, so he's a very attention-hungry dog. <laughs> Just like me. <laughs> So, go get your, I don't know why he won't go get his toy. Oh, well, he's here. As long as I'm petting his head, we're good. He's not going to start bark- barking. Okay. Because if he starts barking, it's like game over. <laughs> how, are you, how, are you, how are you gathering all these dogs in your place? Well, I had been considering getting another dog for a while. Um, okay. And I'd actually, it was like, okay, by the end of the summer, I'll be adjusted enough in my job and everything will be set financially that I could afford to get another dog. Mm-hmm. And I was wanting to get another small breed because Morgan's a Shih Tzu mix. Mm-hmm. The, my dog that I've had for seven years or so. And I wanted to get another older dog because Morgan was about five when I adopted him. Mm-hmm. So he came to me, excuse me, already trained. Um, very, very chill, very calm, didn't bark or anything. So that's what I was wanting to get. But then on Saturday, I was at my friend's house for her birthday party. And one of the other guests was talking about, she does a lot of animal rescues. And she's like, mm-hmm. yeah, there's this dog. I can't take him. Other, I, otherwise I would, but the family is going to take him to back to the shelter and it's a kill shelter. And it's like the third time this dog has been taken <laughs> back. Mm. Um, so he would be put, you know, towards the top of the list. And she was told he was about four years old. He was calm. He didn't bark. Very well behaved. I was also told it was a girl. Not a girl? Um, Not a girl. (laughs) So uh, she goes, she drives down, because he was like in Ansan or something, drives down, gets him. Comes back and messages me. She's like, this dog is nothing like they told us. <laughs> he will not stop barking, as you can hear. <laughs> he will not stop barking. He has got way too much energy. It's a boy. It hasn't been neutered, and it's mounting everything. Yeah. Um, so my advice is to get him fixed ASAP. <laughs> yeah. Um, but the family that had him, they also had a, another dog. So she's like, I, but so I'm assuming he's going to be friendly with other dogs because he was living with another dog. Mm-hmm. Um, and he is, he doesn't, he's never tried to attack Morgan. Like there's no biting, there's no aggression, but he just likes to mount poor Morgan. And Aww. Morgan is such a chill old dog. Morgan's 12. He doesn't really know what to do, so he just kind of sits there and gives me this look like, "Mom, what's happening? Why are you? Why is this happening?" Um, so I try to keep them, I keep them separated during the day when I'm at work. Uh, at night, I'm trying to like get them used to each other. But anytime I see Pippin start to go for Morgan, I'm like, "No!" <laughs> but he's like, a, he's like a quick little bugger. Like I. Try run over to grab him, and he's just like boom, all the way on the other side of the room. He sounds like a miniature train set. Yeah, no, he's he's like uh, he's a Maltese. I'll see if he'll stay calm for a little bit. This is Pippin. Say hi, Pippin. <laughs> yeah, now he's this is him being calm. <laughs> wow! Wow! That's amazing. So if if people want to look into uh, animal shelters and rescuing animals, how would they do that? Um, There's a few groups online. I think Animal Rescue Korea, like the group, it's the organization itself is no longer around. Yeah. But their uh, Facebook page is still really, really active. 
Um, there's a lot of people posting animals that they've rescued or that they're trying to rescue um, that you can adopt or foster. Um, with Again, with Pippin, it was just kind of like a random thing. A friend of mine had heard about this dog and she's like, I'm thinking about taking him in just to keep him out out of the kill shelter, but I can't keep him because I have a cat and my cat is very not other animal friendly. Yeah. So I was like, yeah, I was thinking about getting another dog. I'll take him. And you did. Famous last words. Yeah, yeah the that vet was like, there's no way this dog is four. He's got to be like two at the most. <laughs> like, I think it's like uh, uh, um, Animal Rescue Korea is where I got my cat. Yeah, that's where I got Morgan. I got Morgan through them. They were yeah. really great back in the day. Um, very, very extensive uh, application that you had to fill out to adopt, which was great because it really made you stop and think about what am I doing? How much is this going to cost? Um you know, I am because they really encourage people to take their animals with them when they leave. Yeah. Um, yeah. So they're like, yeah, that's one of the questions on the application is, you know, how much is it going to cost to take your animal back with you? And they have you do all the research before you even adopt. Yeah, that's a big um, issue. You see a lot of first year English teachers who think, oh, I want to own a pet. Mm -hmm. And then the end of the year they're trying to shove it off on some so many other people you have these poor pets that have been just moved around from person to person yeah morgan i think was abandoned um it was this american english teacher had morgan and one other shih tzu went back to the states for something mm -hmm. um was it just supposed to be like a, a short trip like she's supposed to go for a week or two or whatever and come back yeah so she left the, the two shih tzus with her friend and then she never came back. Yeah. See, these things happen. And and so Morgan and this other shih tzu were just kind of like shuffled around from house to house until finally he landed with um, this guy who was fostering him that I got him from. Yeah. And um, he was very content just to keep him. But he also knew that he was going to be moving to Thailand soon. Yeah, And he already had his own Shih Tzu that he'd owned for like years and years and years. He's like, I can't take both of them with me. You know, Morgan is just a foster. So he had like, I think he said like seven different people wanted Morgan. Oh, wow. Uh, and then, but he was just like, he wouldn't even let anybody come meet them because he could tell from the application, like these people have not seriously thought about what goes into owning a dog and like yeah. the money, the commitment, you know, they've never had a dog before. They, oh um, my. And then he got to mine. And I was like, Oh yeah, we had a Shih Tzu growing up for 13 years. Like my mom got her when she was a puppy and then we had her until she passed away. And, you know, I did, I've done all the math and was like, yeah, this is how much money I make. So I don't have to, you know, I can afford all of this. And, uh, the airline that I use, they do pet tickets for two hundred dollars. And oh wow, yeah, that's yeah. not a bad price. Well, that this was back in like 2013. I don't think it's that anymore. <laughs> well, who knows? Coronavirus uh, and all that. Yeah, um, but yeah. So like, he saw mine immediately. He's like, finally, somebody who I feel like I don't cringe when I think about Morgan going home with her. So I came and met Morgan. And, and like, as I was like standing in front of the door to leave, I was just like, I'm going to say straight up, I really, really, really want to take him with me. I want to adopt him. And he's like, honestly, like we're supposed to wait and evaluate because there's a few other people that want him. But I'm just like, no, I don't need to see anybody else. He's like, Morgan's your dog. And I'm like, ah, and so Chose I brought wisely. Morgan. I brought Morgan home and he's been my baby boy since 2013. And now he's just like hates me because I've introduced this new psychotic Maltese to the vase. <laughs> I, I don't know what to do half the time. But tonight, finally, tonight they're finally they've. It seems a lot calmer than usual. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, yeah, yeah. Like, I think he's not going after Morgan. So. Okay. He's just kind of like he's just kind of like putting his face up to him and trying to lick him and stuff so i'm like maybe That's we're finally good. getting over the mounting hump oh 
So if you're on Facebook, go to Animal Rescue Korea. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I've seen a lot of animals up for like foster or adoption or and people go to a lot of the shelters um, around Seoul. So it's All a right. great place. It's a great resource to start with if you're looking to adopt a pet. Or, you, or a pet that Lisa Kelly hasn't adopted yet. <laughs> I, I'm like two. I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> Um, like I used to have Morgan and two cats, but that was easy. Cause the cats, I just, as long as like, all I had to do is make sure their litter boxes were clean and that their food and water bowls were always filled. And that was mm. it. I didn't have to do anything else. Like they were just content to do their own thing. And I well, would try cool. and play with them and they were like, Nope, I don't want to play. <laughs> I'm like, okay, cool. So what's been happening in Korea this week? I've been detached really from the news lately oh well there's Uh, like outside of coronavirus updates that's all i've been doing the big the big big story and this one is this one is weird like we've been talking about it at my office all day today um so on monday this official that works with the oceans and fisheries ministry is out on a boat, a fit, an inspection boat, doing his job, inspecting things. Yeah. Um, and he goes missing. Um, so they call the Coast Guard around like noonish, and they're like, yeah, we're, this guy that was with us is missing, but his shoes are on here, but he's not here. And then okay. they're like, okay. But, and this is in, in the Yellow Sea. So they're about... The West Sea. West Sea, yeah. So about, I want to say like 10 kilometers ish from the northern limit line. Okay, north of Gangwa Island. Something. Yeah, they were, the island that they were closest to is Yongpyeong Island. Yongpyeong. Um, and then, so they're looking into it. They're trying to find him, you know, launch like a huge search and rescue. And then they start hearing from military intelligence that this guy has been found floating in North Korean waters. Oh my. On Tuesday. So on Tuesday, some, a North Korean boat finds him just kind of holding on to something. We don't know what it is. Uh, Oh, so he's alive. He was alive. Yeah. Um, And then, so that's what, but they didn't release any of this to the media until yesterday. Mm Mm-hmm. So we all, we've started getting reports of this civil servant who had gone missing off a boat. And then there were reports that he had been picked up in North Korean waters. And they're like, we believe he's still alive. Yeah, he's he's totally still alive. Mm -hmm. And then today we get news that no, he is not alive. So... Basically, like the story, like the the details that they released today was that um, so sometime on Tuesday, this civilian North Korean civilian vessel, we don't know what it was, uh, if there was like a fishing boat or whatever, but it wasn't military. We know that much. Mm -hmm. So they find him, but they don't take him out of the water. They leave him in the water. And while they're like wearing gas masks, they question him from a distance. Like, that's what wow, they're really they, scared of the corona. They were so scared of, I guess, because of uh, coronavirus. And so, but they, and then they just leave him. They just leave him in the water <laughs> wow. and go off somewhere else. And then s- Tuesday night, a North Korean military vessel comes across him. And then they shoot him, kill him, and then burn the body on the boat. <laughs> Barbecue. Yeah. Um, wow. So this has created so much, like everybody is talking about it because it's so weird. Because nobody what was he knows. doing going to North Korea? Well, see, that's the thing because like they were they're looking into his family because at first people were speculating like, oh, maybe he was trying to defect to North Korea, but like his friends and family were like, but why? Like he's never he's never given us any sort of inclination that he liked North Korea or that he was unhappy with South Korea. Like he had some debt, but it was like 
roughly 16 million won ish, I think is the number I heard. Yeah. Which is not a huge amount of debt. Yeah. It's small if you compare it to American college debt. Uh, yeah. And I mean, he did just get divorced, um, but he's mm. got two kids and, and, you know, everybody was just like, what was he doing? How did he get off the boat? Like what, what did he, did he jump? Like, was he trying to, you know, kill himself? Was he really trying to defect? Like, we don't see him doing that. We don't see him doing that. So the, like the big mystery is nobody really knows how or why he got off the boat in the first place. Wow. Uh, and, you know, how that would involve leaving his shoes. Cause he did leave, his shoes were on deck. Um, they did find his shoes on deck. So he intentionally, he was intentionally doing something. Something, yeah. Um, So I don't know. Or, I mean, I don't know. Maybe, like, was the weather rough at sea on Monday? Maybe You wouldn't take your shoes off still. But maybe, like, he got jostled that they flew off. Uh, uh, They didn't say what state they found his shoes in. They just said both shoes were still on the boat. Okay. So they could have, depending on the type of shoe, they could have flown off as he was knocked overboard. I don't know. Uh, okay. But I mean, but it's still, it's, it's, that's like, it's really strange. Yeah. And now we're back to that, the weird, the weird Korea we, we miss. We yeah. Love. And then, yeah. And then he was in the water for over 24 hours, apparently yeah, for around 24 hours ish. That, this, this last 24 hours are sound awful. Mm hmm. But like the thing is, is like, and this is kind of common knowledge for like the last, I don't know how long, the North Korean military on the borders, um, they have shoot to kill orders because mm-hmm. they're trying to keep coronavirus out of North Korea. So along yeah. the border with China and then on like any sea borders, they have shoot to kill. So if they see somebody trying to get into the country that should not be getting into the country, you know. Yeah, so. that, 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 that leads a little bit more to that rumor that they're doing that for the civilian populace, too. Yeah, so it's it's really and as far as I'm aware, I don't think think North Korea anybody in a, an official capacity for North Korea has commented yet mm-hmm. but you know the South Korean government's just been having a heyday about it you know all the political parties are just like this is you know ah North Korea going after them and then like the um the conservative party is going after the South Korean government yeah because they're like this is a little suspect you've known about this since Monday You've known that this guy was missing since Monday. And then since Tuesday, you knew that he was in North Korea. Mm -hmm. But you didn't announce it anything until Wednesday. Um, So they were uh, speculating that the government intentionally held off on saying anything about it until after Moon Jae-in made his speech with the at the UN General Assembly. I think it was Monday. Oh. Tuesday morning, early Tuesday morning, our time, Monday, New York time, mm-hmm. um, where he was like, we should officially declare an end to the Korean War. Oh, yeah, um, that one, that speech. Yeah, so they, you know, the PPP. Why they were, <clears throat> I'm sorry, why, why, would, why would he be worried about that overshadowing his speech when he knows that BTS is going to overshadow his speech? Uh, I don't think it was so much like overshadowing the speech. I think that they were worried that it was going to screw up the whole, let's make peace, North Korea. Be like, let's end the war. Let's make peace. Ah, you've got one of ours. Give them back. Sort of. Yeah. But then I mean, I could see out. that kind of aspect of it. Why they, why they might, but I don't know. Part of me is like, maybe they just didn't want to say anything because they're like, we don't know if this guy is alive or dead. Yeah. Yeah. And they, they, then they, they cut that direct line to Pyongyang, didn't they? Yeah. Yeah. That was another thing. Like, um, I think other uh, politician was like, why didn't you try to contact North Korea? And the unification ministry is like, 
Do you or do you not remember over the summer when they like literally snipped all of the telephone lines and then they blew up the inter-Korean communication center in Vietnam? Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Do you remember that little, that little explosion? Remember the (laughs) earthquake we felt in in South Korea? We can't can't contact them even though we want to. Trust me, we would have tried, but... And they've actually like tried to contact them through like roundabout ways and, and mm-hmm. stuff. They're like, we're trying. It's just they cut all the phone lines. Yeah. So, How's Pippin sorry. doing? Pippin's getting really excited, huh? Oh yeah, he's uh, he's like, just give rub my you know scratch my ears. Yeah. So I'm scratching scratching his ears, trying scratching to keep him ears. calm and not barking. Well, that is a weird, 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 weird story. It's really weird, yeah, because, I mean, nobody knows why he got out of the boat, how he got out of the boat, and where he was found in North Korean waters was, like, 38 kilometers from the boat, from where he started in the boat. Mm. And, and you know, just... So, That's pretty far to of, go. Yeah. Yeah, you know, and so he's just kind of floating around in the ocean on, like, a raft or something. And then finally he sees a boat and he's like, ah, rescue. And he's like, crap, I'm in North Korea. <laughs> we'll find that out one day when all these records get released. Yeah. Well, they're, I mean, they're trying, they're trying to investigate it now. So I don't know. I mean, I suspect we'll be getting news on this for the next few days mm. until like the next big thing happens. But yeah, there's, it's been a, a huge topic of conversation in the media and you know it's just it's it's bizarre it's really huh. bizarre well another in other news there is also uh they're about to pass a or they already passed this a uh, fair economy act which sounds dull as hell but mm-hmm. this is big because it allows uh well it requires corporations or big corporations to have independent auditors it, it changes the voting power of the ruling families in their own table and now because i remember that there was there were some things uh there was a venture capital company trying to take over sk and then there was another event uh, another activist Oh right, company. yeah. They were trying to stop Samsung from Sam stop Samsung from uh uh merging yeah merging all these entities to give uh generation three uh control over the company, uh, the pass it on to the third, the, the, the Kim Jong un of the Samsung yeah. side. So um <laughs> this law this law will supposedly kill that loophole and but it will allow outside investors if they are so inclined to to go in and take control over boards and or have have a little more of a uh actually no what it what it does is they don't really take over the tables they just thwart the families in charge from using it oh, as yeah, right. so it gives them like more of a say. Yeah, so the board of directors it has always been just a stamping committee for the the table head for the family. Right, right. Even though, like, I know the government has been trying trying to pass a bunch of laws, um, and I think one of the ones I don't know if they ever did it, but I or if they were just talking about it, but I know they were trying to get. Where at least one, you have to have at least one outside board member or a certain like a quota yeah. on outside board members. But I wasn't yeah. sure if they ever passed that. This change, I think this changes how much voting power they have. Um, it doesn't really matter. Uh, I mean, the details, the I mean, you can, you can look up the details. I still just mm-hmm. think it's still funny. Like you said before, the, the conservative party is called the PPP, which... Uh-huh. Uh, it's it's just the PPP, PPP. It's like you're potty training a child. <gasps> you got a PPP. You got a PPP. Did you make a PPP? Do you? It's so hard being sometimes. You know when I have to say it very seriously. <laughs> the PPP. <laughs> now you're going to think that every time you're on the radio. 
which we will not reveal what radio station that is. No, <laughs> we're not supposed to talk details about my job. <laughs> <laughs> what are you because drinking it's little, tonight? It's a little too late for that, but we can going forward. <laughs> it looks like your 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 bottle of what you're drinking has an evening gown with a zip up. What are you drinking? It's a koozie. A koozie. A Doc, it's a Doc Ford's koozie. Rum Bar and Grill. Yeah, from uh, Fort, Fort Myers. But it's a, no, what, you Cor- can't have that. You are don't you drinking want that. Corona or something? Yeah. Ah, so you're embarrassed to show it. Okay. No, I just like having a koozie. I don't know why. I mm-hmm. cool with no, they're koozie. fine. They're fine. I have such a collection of Mardi Gras koozies that I never use. I don't want to be accused of a product placement or, or whatever. <laughs> After I like showed off like the restaurant on my koozie. So yeah, that, that didn't work. That oh, well. Didn't work. oh, well. Yeah. I tried. <laughs> yeah. Um, as far as coronavirus goes, we're going down. Now we're going back up again because of untraced yeah. cases. Yeah. Um, well, I think like the double digit cases, because we had three days of, of under 100. And those were Sunday, honestly, Monday numbers. Yeah, that was like Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. Yeah, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. Yeah, but it was weekend numbers. Yeah. Um. So I saw that. I did. I wasn't like getting too excited because I'm like, guys, these are weekend numbers. You have to wait until Wednesday. True, true. And I, I just I just see the – when I see the graphs, I just treat them like – um, I've, they seem like stock market graphs to me. So I'm like, oh, it's just it's just finding a new support. It'll go up and then it'll go back down again. Yeah. So we were at, what, like, um, it was like 110 yesterday and then we're at 125 today. Mm-hmm. Um, at this point, I don't know. But I mean, the government, they actually, the government is going to announce tomorrow exactly what, um, regulations they're doing for Tucson. Uh because you know they keep saying Tucson. Yeah, yeah. Designated. What's happening? Oh yeah. It's gonna thinking. be designated like this special quarantine week, two weeks. It's actually two uh-huh. weeks. It's from September twenty seventh through October eleven. Um these rules or whatever are gonna be in place. Then yeah. they haven't said what they are yet. They're going to announce those tomorrow. They said uh today. Hmm. So today they're like, tomorrow, we're going to tell everybody tomorrow. Maybe that means they're like, we don't know what they are yet. Um, but it's going to be somewhere in between 2 and 2.5. Huh. Um, they definitely said it's going to be higher than level 2, but they seem a little hesitant um, to say if it's going to be a full 2.5. Oh, um, okay, okay, okay. Um, their big thing, though, is just trying to get people not to travel. But they know that people are going to travel. So they're already, like, putting... So a lot of these measures are going to be safety measures for, like, bus stations, train stations. Um, they've already shut down the rest stops. Yeah. You can't go in and sit down and eat at a rest stop. Um, they're only allowed to serve takeout. And... Yeah. You know, the trains are only selling the window seats. Yeah. Um, I think bus it did buses. Were they lowering I, how many? I haven't heard anything about the bus. I haven't heard anything about buses. That would make so I don't sense. Know. Um, but they're but you know, but they're still sticking to the please don't travel, stay at home. Don't the other but, one is this mishandling of the flu vaccine. Oh, right. Yeah, that was, uh, was that Monday or Tuesday? I think that was Monday. Um, so what we were, we usually have for a few years, we've been having this free flu vaccine mm-hmm. drive going through. And then Monday they mishandled 57, what was it? It's like a portion of 5 million doses. Yeah. Mil- mm-hmm. uh, some, yeah millions of doses were mm-hmm. mishandled, can't be used. Right, yeah. They uh, it was because the trucks that they were being transported in, yeah, um, to the places where they were going to be doing the shots, they found out that they were not refrigerated the oh, entire God. time. Why? Um, so they, 
Yeah. And the health ministry was like super pissed about this. Yeah. Because it wasn't even their fault. It was the the um the transportation company's fault. The transportation company's fault. I'm sorry. I know. I know it's upsetting. You can't get a flu shot, Pippin. Oh man. Um, but yeah, so they're really, and they had just expanded it, um, the program to allow more people to get free flu shots. Yeah. And they were encouraging everybody, go get a flu shot, go get a flu shot. And then they messed it up. Because uh, flu season's coming up and they didn't want to, I don't know if this is a real word or if it's a word that Korea came up with or whatever, but they've been calling it a twindemic. Yeah, I've never they heard that one tw- before. They don't. Oh, it's been all over the English media. Um, and I think in like Korean, it's twindemic. I'm not sure. Um, I have to double check that. But I know in all the English media, they're saying twindemic. Uh, but where they have a double pandemic or a double epidemic of the normal flu, the seasonal flu and coronavirus going on at the same time. They're like, we don't want that. That sounds, I think it sounds like disaster. Mm-hmm. I like how um, the minister in charge says a thorough investigation will be carried out to identify the facts. Once the facts are determined, I will apologize for things that went wrong. It's like, well, whatever we find out, I'll, I'll just like, to- I want to. I think she wants to know exactly what she's apologizing for, or if she could be like, "Aha, it's not me. It's them. yeah." It's like, it's whoever it's that the is, transportation company. Yeah, it's like it's like wow, they must be really good in the marriage because it's like I, I don't know what I did. I apologize, whatever I did. I apologize. I don't know what I did. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, no, because I do remember they were like very, very adamant. Like it had nothing to do with the manufacturing process. Like all these doses of the flu shot were fine. We checked them. Everything was great. Um, it's just, they were not refrigerated for part of the time that they were being transported. Yeah. They they use craft beer trucks. Yeah. I know. I know. It's so silly, isn't it? They should have. Yeah. Like no one thought of. Checking to uh, make sure that the refrigerator was on. Yeah. No I mean, isn't that, that kind of like the thing that you do? Don't they have sensors for that? Like if something goes out. Like well, maybe they over. will now, you know? Yeah. Okay, That's how we got to be to... good at everything is we got to screw it up a few times first and then. And then somebody figures right. out how to put in sensors and alarms and stuff. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Was there anything happening? Is it, okay. For what? What are your plans for Chusok? I am going to be spending Chusok at home training this one. Yeah, you heard of anything going on? I think nothing's going on. I think I do you am know? Not. No, no one's traveling. I'm not traveling. I'm not. I mean, I don't really travel for Chusok anyway. No, no, I'm usually um, working doing doing tours. Yeah, I I'm tours. usually. I mean, working in media, you know, I always have to work. I typically, I have, I would in the past, I'd have to work at least half of Tusok and half of Solo. I never, mm. ever got the full holiday off. Um, so there was no point in traveling anywhere. Mm. Uh, but this year I get the full holiday off. But I do, I have to work on Hangul Day. Oh. I don't get a three-day weekend. Oh. But it's reduced hours, so. See, I'm doing, um, I'm. I'm, it's I'm, not like a full work day. I I'm in really a startup care. and it's frustrating to me because I want to work and I'm like, oh, everything has to be on pause for a few days. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's just, I just want, I want to work. <laughs> it's mm-hmm. killing me. I'm, uh, I'm hoping, I'm hoping this one will let me sleep in. That would be great. Yeah. Um, but because like, I'm not sure because um. He's used to my work hour, my work schedule, Mm -hmm. which is where I get up sometime between usually 5.30 and 6. This week, it's been between 5 and 5.30 Mm -hmm. because he's just zooming all over the house. (laughs) I'm like, ah, I give up. And then the one morning, he didn't do it this morning. It might calm down after a while. He might just get accustomed and calmed down a bit yeah he actually did not keep me up at all last night but the mosquitoes did 
Oh no. I could not fall like fully fall asleep because I had I was constantly getting bit and then it's mm. like don't scratch, don't scratch. But then like I'd be half asleep and I'd scratch and I'm like, ah, now I can't stop scratching. Nice like, yeah. 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 So like every hour I'm like up and I don't have any like bug bite stuff. So I'm just, but I had aloe vera and I'm like, maybe this will make it feel better. Oh man. So I just this... get up and like slather aloe vera. It did work actually. You, have you considered a mosquito net? Um, I need to. I actually had one and then I lost it. I ordered uh, we it. Haven't, I, I haven't lived in a place. This sounds so privileged. I haven't lived in a place where I've had a mosquito problem in a long, long time. But for a while we did. And mosquito net was very necessary. I. This is the first place I've lived where I've had a huge mosquito problem. Like, I'm just like... Yeah, you could just all these red bumps everywhere and it's from Mm. mosquitoes. And like, yeah, like if you look, you know, there's like several right here. Oh, my. And then all over my leg. All right. There we go. Show us all those bites, Emma. It's not, it's not fine. (laughs) Oh, my God. Look at you sitting all calm. I think we'll. I think we're going to wrap up the show today. You got anything else yeah. going on? Any, I don't think we have any bits. I think I just saw a mosquito fly by the camera. <laughs> One actually landed on the mic or, or a little earlier. And I'm like, Oh my God. You I don't really want to hit the issue. new mic. I don't want to hit the new any. mic. Yeah. It's but just, This is taunting you. It knows where it's safe. Yeah. It's like, Oh, you can't hit me here. I'm just going to wait until you fall asleep. And then I'm going to make your life miserable. Oh man. But well, I think if I if I turn my fan on, my bedroom will get cold enough that I have to like cover up. Yeah. So if I just like burrito myself in my comforter, maybe I'll be safe. Okay, that's that's so that's that's a plan. That's a that's plan. plan. But it's like it's almost October and I'm like I know, ah, but the, the the mosquitoes love to linger. On and this. I didn't even have this big of a mosquito problem during like the summer. It wasn't that bad. This is like the worst it's been. And I like the last few nights I've just been like, I mean, between dealing with him and then just like, ah, ah, mosquitoes now. Yeah. Why are you suddenly biting me? Dang it. I scratched it again. Ah. Well, anyway, if, if you if you enjoy the show, please subscribe. Or if you really want to support us, you can support us on Patreon for just five dollars a month yes. where you can get extra goodies. What are you doing? Pip it. Uh, Emma, Emma, you're going to be making more videos on your YouTube? Yes, that's another thing that I'm hoping to do during Two Socks since I'm going to be sticking around the house. I'm going to try and get some more burlesque videos up or at least like get them in the process of being made mm-hmm. so that I can like post them regularly. You're going to have to put but, Pippin under control if you're going to be doing that. Yeah, I know. He's... Yeah, no, now he's like trying to get to the other dog because the other dog has fallen asleep under the desk. Well, yeah, yeah. and we're also yeah, make, doing yeah, tours. Uh, Dark Side of Soul. We're still doing tours, darksideofsoul.com. Uh, if you, you can also subscribe to us on um, on Twitter. You can follow us on Twitter at King Sejong. And you can follow us on Facebook at facebook.com slash soul podcast and you can find us on youtube at youtube.com slash zen kimchi if you're not watching us on youtube already all right so many places to see our lovely faces yay right, hear our voices that right yay. i did not mean to rhyme but i totally made that right you did like a boss yeah all i'm right. so good at it i just did it without thinking just be careful everyone during this two suck week coming mm-hmm. up Please avoid travel if you can help it. Really avoid doing stupid stuff like going to clubs if they're open or bars. Yeah, I would not recommend clubs. Bars should be okay. Just remember what happened during Children's Day weekend. Mm -hmm. We don't want that to happen again. We don't don't want to repeat. Wear your mask. Yes, wear your mask. I know it's uncomfortable to go to a bar wearing a mask, but wear your mask. Yeah. If you're going to go to a bar, wear a mask. Home drinking. Mm-hmm. That's what I will be doing. Yeah. Also, Pippin stole all my money this month. Oh, <laughs> well, there you go. I can't go out even if I wanted to. Oh, Pippin. Oh, Pippin, you're such an expensive puppy. 
thing you're cute. Yeah, it's a good thing you're cute. Well, thank you, Emma. That's been a good time. Until everyone, until next time. Mm-hmm. Be safe. <laughs> be safe. Bye. <laughs> the Soul Podcast is produced by Joe McPherson and is copyrighted 2020 by Zenkinchi International under the Creative Commons license. Parts of this podcast may be used for non-commercial purposes if you remember to give us credit. You can contact us at sejong at soulpodcast.com. That's S-E-J-O-N-G at soulpodcast.com. For a transcript of this episode, listen to it again and write down what you hear. Please support us at patreon.com slash soulpodcast.